Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here, and in this video I'll be taking a look at the Stormcast Eternals faction for Realms of Ruin, a new Age of Sigmar RTS game, which just released on November 17th. And I gotta say, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I haven't played it too much yet, so I'm not an expert or anything, but uh, one thing the game is missing is really a detailed reference guide with all of the information about units and structures in a single place. And so I took it upon myself to make that myself, but I will make these slides available. Uh, I'll put a link in the description as well as a link to a document where I have all of the information in this video on a single page of a Word document. So uh, take a look at that if you're interested. And I'm planning to do a video for each of the four factions in the game, so this first one is just about the Stormcast Eternals. So here you can see all of the units and upgrades uh, in one slide. Uh, there are ten different units for the Stormcast Eternals. And then the upgrades, uh, all of these are divided into different tiers. Uh, so you can unlock higher tiers by upgrading the Command Post, which is the structure that you start off with in your base. There are two resources in the game, Command and Realmstone. Units all cost Command, and the higher tier units uh, cost Realmstone as well. Upgrades only cost Realmstone. And the upgrades are actually pretty simplified in that uh, all of the upgrades from the same tier cost the same amount of resources and also uh, take the same amount of time to research. So tier 1 upgrades take 30 seconds, tier 2 upgrades take 45 seconds, and tier 3 takes 60 seconds uh, to complete. Uh, same with the, the units, actually. Uh, tier 1 units, at least for the Stormcast, uh, take 20 seconds to build, tier 2 units 30 seconds, and tier 3 units 50 seconds. And uh, just bear in mind that uh, these the resource costs for all of these units, uh, it may change in the future if there's a balance update, uh, which there tend to be a lot of, I think, in RTS games. Uh, but these are just the, the costs of the units when the game was first released. So let's take a look at each individual unit. First, we got Liberators. So you start off with a group of these heavy infantry at the beginning of a match, alongside a heroic unit, which we'll get to later. Uh, there are four Liberators per unit. Uh, they cost 150 command, and they just take up one population. Uh, all Tier 1 and Tier 2 units, I believe, take one population, and Tier 3 take two. Uh, these guys are very tough. They don't do a whole lot of damage, but they can take some serious punishment. Uh, they start off with an ability already unlocked, Sigmar's Aegis, which costs 30 Realmstone. Uh, every activated ability in this game costs resources. Uh, so you have to use them at the right time, but they can be pretty powerful and turn the tide of a battle. So for the Liberators, their ability just increases their defense temporarily. Uh, they also have a Tier 1 upgrade, Reinforced Sigmarite Armor, uh, which you'll see on a few other units, but this one only affects Liberators. And that uh, further increases their defense, just a passive upgrade. And then at Tier 3, so pretty late in the game, there's a second upgrade you can get for them called Violent Rebuttal, which will increase the damage they deal when they explode on death. So heavy units like these Liberators uh, take less damage from ranged units. Moving on, we got Vanguard Hunters. So this is the assault type unit for uh, Tier 1 Stormcast. Uh, there are, again, four of these guys per unit. They cost 140 command to build, and they have a whole lot of abilities. So they've got Charge, uh, which costs 60 command. It causes them to dash forward a little bit and engage the first enemy they come into contact with. Uh, the way the combat system works in Realms of Ruin, where units get locked into combat with the only way to get out of there is by retreating back to base. Um, which units engage in combat is uh, very important, so it may seem kind of strange that uh, a simple ability like a charge costs resources, but uh, when used at the right place and time, it can really impact the course of a battle. Uh, they also have the Astral Compass ability, which costs 15 Realmstone, so this one they already have unlocked. And it's just like, a, if you play StarCraft, it's like a mini scanner sweep, uh, it just reveals the Fog of War at a location for a few seconds. Uh, they also have another ability called Hidden Paths, which costs 20 Realmstone. This one you do have to unlock with an upgrade. And the way the upgrade system works in this game, a lot of the time you have to choose between one of two upgrades. You can't get both in a, in a single game. So for this one, you can either choose to increase their defense with the armor upgrade, or unlock that uh, activated ability, which allows them to become hidden and increase their movement speed. So a bit of a stealthy scout unit which also is pretty good at taking on heavy units. Next we got the dedicated ranged unit for tier 1, and these are the Vanguard Raptors. They start off with Hurricane Crossbows, again four of these guys per unit, they got 160 command. Uh, these guys don't have any ability unlocked when you first build them, so you have to get them through upgrades. Uh, you can choose either Rapid Fire or Long Strikes. Uh, rapid Fire is a very powerful ability that calls down a volley of powerful bolts uh, in a small circular area, and anything caught in there will take a lot of damage. So it costs 40 Realmstone for that ability. And then if you choose the long strike upgrade, it actually swaps out their hurricane crossbows for the long strike crossbows, which have a much longer range. And it also changes the ability. They get the pinning shot ability, which uh, fires in a straight line and damages and stuns units caught in that line. And that is for 45 realm stone. One thing to note about these ranged units in the game, uh, they do have to stop and set up their weapons before attacking. So you have to kind of treat them almost like an artillery unit. You do want them to stay back. Definitely don't want them anywhere near any melee units. And you want to uh, support them 
with like a screen of melee units in front. Or else these guys will just get slaughtered in combat. Next up we got the heroic unit for tier 1, and this is the Knight Vexiller. Uh, you do start off the game with this guy alongside the unit of Liberators. Uh, he costs 240 command and 50 realm stone if he dies. And so he also has the charge ability. Now uh, he also has a passive uh, ability icon of the storm host which I think you have to unlock through the Valiant Resolve upgrade I believe, because I, I didn't notice it activating when uh, you first start the game, but that just grants a shield to nearby allied units. Uh, but he does have the Banner of the Reforge activated ability for 60 Realmstone you can channel for, I think, up to 10 seconds to heal and reinforce a nearby allied units. So a good way to uh, just heal up without having to retreat all the way back to base. And then there's another upgrade, Supernatural Vigor, which just increases his health and damage output. Moving on to Tier 2, we've got Prosecutors. So this is the uh, Assault unit. Uh, they can fly. Flying does not cost resources. You just select it and they fly up into the air. Uh, they can't attack with their basic attacks while flying, but they get increased vision and move a lot faster and, of course, can fly over terrain. Uh, they are pretty expensive, 300 command and 100 realm stone for three of these guys. Uh, but they do have some powerful abilities. Heralds of Righteousness is basically a charge attack, but you use it when they're flying. 120 command for them to slam into the ground and deal some good area damage and engage that unit. And then they've got Celestial Barrage, which costs 85 realm stone. So this is a ranged attack, which damages and slows enemies in an area from the air. And of course, enemies can just move out of the way, so it's probably more effective if, you know, using it on something that's already in combat. And these guys only have one upgrade. At tier 3, you can increase their armor. Next up, we got the Evocators. These guys are the tier 2 heavy unit. Uh, there are four per unit, and it costs 300 command, 100 realmstone. Uh, these guys have an ability unlocked called Empowering Aura, which costs 115 realmstone. Pretty pricey, but it does provide a powerful aura that uh, increases your allies' armor and movement, and also slowly damages uh, enemies within that radius. Uh, you can increase the effects of that aura with the potent aura upgrade. Uh, you can also opt to just give them uh, increased defense with the reinforced Sigmarite armor. And then we got the Celestar Ballista. This is an artillery unit uh, at tier 2. 270 command and 70 realm stone. And it's pretty long ranged, and again, it does have to stop and set up before attacking. Also, with ranged units, they fire in an, in an arc, so they won't actually be able to hit anything outside of that arc. So, setting up them in a good position is uh, actually very important. There are two possible upgrades Hardened Munitions increases their attack damage versus monsters and heroes, that's just for the, the basic attack. Or you can give them a special ability, Lightning Charged Shot, which for 95 Realmstone will bombard an area with these slow moving but very powerful uh, bolts. That also slow the enemy, and this has a little bit of a longer range than its normal attack as well. Now moving on to tier 3, these are the strongest units that the Stormcast have. we got the Storm Drake Guard. This is an assault unit which can also fly. 580 command and 250 realm stone. Uh, the charge attack is called Draconic Onslaught, which you use when it's in the air, so it'll crash into the ground and deal some damage and knock back enemies. Uh, you can also cast Draconic Fireball while it's flying to launch a fireball which catches the ground on fire at the target. If it's on the ground, you can instead use Draconic Flamestream, which is a big area of effect attack that does a whole lot of damage and also sets the ground ablaze. So three different abilities for the Storm Drake Guard, and you'll notice that there are no upgrades for uh, these tier three units. Uh, that's because they come so late in the game that uh, it's kind of too late for upgrades, I think, at that point. Next up, we got the Annihilators. So these are the heavy tier 3 unit, uh, there's three of them per unit, 550 command and 200 realm stone. And they just have one single activated ability called Force of a Falling Star, which is basically another charge attack, but it, it damages and also knocks back enemies hit. It's a 175 realm stone. And then we've got the most powerful hero for the Stormcast is the Lord Celestant. 660 command and 320 realm stone for this guy. He also has a charge attack which costs 120 command, and he has two activated abilities. Call forth the storm for 250 realm stone, creates a powerful storm that deals a whole lot of damage when it's first cast, and then continues to do less damage over time. And then Furious Retribution for 125 realm stone. This one boosts the attack movement and grants unstoppable to surrounding units. I think it might just be infantry units. I'll have to go back and check. But if you have like your whole army in one place, uh, this can really be very impactful. So those are the units. Now moving on to the structures. There are five structures for each faction. Uh, four of them are built on the arcane conduits that you capture throughout the map. So you start off with the command post, uh, which for the Stormcast is called the Muster Point. And this one generates about 30 command. So this actually is what is generating most of your command. Uh, you also get more command from capturing those arcane conduits, but it's a lot less. You get like up to three commands just for each conduit. 
It also heals and reinforces allied units nearby, and also can attack and re reveal nearby enemies as well. And there are three upgrades to uh, the command post. So baggage train, frontline, and guiding beacon, and of course these just unlock the higher tier units. It also increases the population cap, so for Stormcast you start off with 6 population, upgrading to tier 2 increases that to 9, tier 3 increases it to 13, and then upgrading it the final time increases the population cap to 16 and also unlocks the deep strike ability. Then for the arcane conduits there are the four different options. You've got a defense bastion, which is called the Wrathful Idol for Stormcast, and it just attacks enemies within the targeting area. You do have to choose that area. It can be just the sort of immediate areas surrounding the idol, or you can make it hit things at a distance. And it also reveals stealth and deals more damage as the Bastion's region grows. Uh, you can upgrade it to the Thunder Idol, which allows it to attack airborne units and force them to the ground, which seems a, bit, a little bit situational. Uh, this one you'll definitely need the Outpost Siphon, allows you to harvest Realmstone. So it costs 700 command to build, uh, but uh, those arcane conduits, they normally don't give you any realm stone, but if you build one of these on there, uh, you can get up to 10 realm stone, and if you upgrade it, you can increase that to 25 realm stone. And next up, we've got the healing bastion, which is called the Sigmarite Way Shrine. Uh, this one also heals and reinforces allies, so if you don't want to retreat all the way back to base, you can have this. It also increases your population cap by one, and I guess if you have four of them, that'll increase your population cap by four, which doesn't seem very practical, because there are only a limited number of arcane conduits on the map, so I highly doubt you'll be getting four of these in any game, but uh, I guess you potentially have a population cap of up to 20. Uh, the Battle Fervor upgrade, though, uh, quite impactful, potentially allows you to summon two extra units at the same time, so that's like three units you can train at a time uh, with one of these with the Battle Fervor upgrade, and you can do that again to train five units at a time. And then finally we got the Aetherwing Roost. This is a Vision Bastion, but it also increases the command generated by that Arcane Conduit up to a maximum of nine. It also reveals nearby enemies. And then if you upgrade it with the Aetherwing Patrol, uh, it increases the command even further up to 15. And it also allows you to research one more upgrade at a time and unlocks the Aetherwing Patrol ability, uh, which just grants you vision at a target location. And then we got two other general structure upgrades on Yielding Mortar which increases the defense of Bastions, and then at Tier 3, Azerite Protection damages enemy melee units that are attacking your Bastions. So that is a quick rundown on all of the units and structures for the Stormcast Eternals. Uh, let me know if you noticed any mistakes. I know I could have been a little more detailed on the ability effects, and also that each ability has a cooldown, uh, but uh, I just want to keep it simple for this one for now. I may more, add more details later, uh, but let me know what you think, and keep an eye out for the next faction video that I'll be doing. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.